Hey, this is Retired Geek Woman and Adventures with Rhiannon, Stardew Valley 1.5, episode number 30. And we're going to take up right where we left off, which is day 12 of spring in year number 2. We've come a long way in such a short period of time. Uh, we're doing pretty good on money, almost 20000 in the bank, but we do have a lot of expensive things to pay for, so we don't want to get too comfortable with our monies. Looks like there's an egg festival. We tried that last year. Um, we didn't do very well, so I'm not sure uh, we want to get into it this year. We may try again. The mayor's trying to get us to come down um, it's tomorrow between 9 and 2 as you show up. And basically, it's an Easter egg hunt is really what it is. And I just I never have done very well with that uh, I've even looked at maps where all the eggs are um, but I always lose and it always makes me mad so I don't know we'll see if we decide to participate again and see if we do any better um, you know the thing is Abigail always beats us at everything <laughs> so we got a little grudge against Abigail but that's okay so, uh, as always, we're going to do our morning chores. I've asked you guys in polls, if anybody checks my community tab on my YouTube channel, I've asked you guys if you want me to cut out these um, mundane morning chores that I do every single day. And so far, the polls say, leave it in. So I'm leaving it in. And basically, I run around, I pet all my animals. Um, I milk any uh, cows and goats that hey, we have one cow and a goat and we collect uh, the eggs that if we have eggs and we collect the uh, products from the day before so um, we're gonna pop our cheeses in our cheese press and uh, come on our milk I'm like what the heck am I doing maybe if I tried to get milk instead of cheese Oh Lord, I even said it wrong. Sorry about that. We gotta put milk in the cheese press to get our milk. And we're gonna come in here and we got a duck egg and a couple of chicken eggs, so that's great. And right now we've only got one mayonnaise machine. It would make better sense if we had more. Eventually I'll get around to it. And what I try to do is I look at my, all the eggs that I have and whatever I have the most of, that's what I put uh, in the machine. So that's kind of what the, how I do it. Um, most days I check the greenhouse. It just depends on, you know, if I, if I know I just did it yesterday and I know that there's nothing there, then I don't worry about it. I try to put away the things I don't need, uh, before I continue on. As you can see, we're going to sell our mayonnaise and our cheese products. Uh, that's how we're making most of our money. And right now, cauliflower spring is cauliflower season. And so I try to make sure that uh, I have plenty of cauliflower growing all spring long. Right now, as I'm trying to talk to you, I am having the noisiest cat issue. <laughs> that is Elwood. That's the picture I just showed you. Um, he's wandering around howling because my husband is in his office with the door shut and he's mad. My cats hate having my door shut and they complain about it. If you open the doors, they, they be quiet. But he's in there doing stuff and he's making too much noise. So he went ahead and shut his door. In the meantime, Elwood is making himself very well known. So, um, and I did have a viewer that said, if I don't post pictures, then it didn't happen. I posted a picture of course in that one, he's sleeping and looking really cute. It's just like a child. Children are wonderful when they're sound asleep and they look so sweet and angelic. And that's the same thing with my cats. They look angelic when they're sleeping. They're kind of annoying when they're not. So anyway, that was a picture for those of you that had asked about it. So while we were being interrupted, I finished my chores and I found a leak. And I'm going to grab that. Those make pretty decent gifts. I, I don't know of anyone for sure that hates them. Um, so we'll double check. And we're going to pop in and see Harvey, Harvey real quick. If you watched previous episodes, Harvey is my boyfriend. So hi, Harvey. So we've got, uh, when you give him a gift here, we can see where he's at. We have nine hearts with Harvey. So that is wonderful. So we're going to keep working on that relationship and get it to 10 hearts. Because when you get to 10 hearts, then you can get married. So then their husband or spouse or whatever you want to call them. 
Uh, we're looking here at the birthdays. I'm trying really hard to hit the birthdays this year. I did so terrible last year. I'm trying to remember to run behind the counter here to say hi to Pierre. He's behind that counter all the time and we buy things from him, but we don't um, always talk to him <laughs> because he's behind the counter. So as you can see, we're buying the more cauliflower seeds. We had picked a bunch, so I wanted to try to make sure that I had plenty. Eventually, we are gonna be self-sufficient and grow our own seeds and we won't have to buy them anymore. So Harvey will, I mean, Pierre will have plenty of customers without our, uh, without our money, but uh, um, for now, we still need to buy what we need, but I love it when I get to the point where I no longer have to purchase seeds and I grow my own, I process them myself with seed making machines, um, and I love it. So that's a goal that we're gonna get to eventually. And so as you can see, I've got plenty of spaces for cauliflower. Um, I also keep, I'm going to start processing the produce instead of selling it, which we have to do in the beginning because we don't have any money and we don't have anything to process it. Uh, but now we have um, canning, uh, I call them canning jars, which is really what they, what you would can in, but canning barrels or something. And I thought, oh, I didn't buy enough seeds. Can you believe that? Ugh. Um, so right now I'm going to be canning these cauliflowers because they're worth so much more um, if you process them. If any of the items are worth more if you process them. Process them. Um, so anyway, I just thought, uh, do I go get more or do I just pop down these random seeds? I decided to save myself a hassle and pop down the random seeds. I know I shouldn't do that. I should go back and, call, get, go back and get more cauliflower. I wasn't 100% sure uh, how much time that we have. Cauliflower takes quite a while to grow, uh, quite a long time to grow. So you have to kind of pay attention to that. You wouldn't want to plant something that it would, you wouldn't have enough time to grow it because you're wasting your money. So anyway, um, I was just popping down some random seeds. We got lots of cauliflowers still growing, so that's great. I very quickly checked our hay supply. Um, basically, I try to figure 30 hay per animal, um, and that tells me how much hay I need to have in the silo, and that's for winter. That makes sure that they get fed all winter long. Um, I have extra hay that's tucked away and we keep getting gifts. I think Marnie sends us hay sometimes. So we've got plenty tucked away here and there, but I want to make sure that I have the right amount of silos. Eventually, I think I, uh, once I, I'll have uh, two barns and a coop and they'll be full. So that's 12 animals each. So that's 36 animals. Uh, is what I end up with. So I usually go overboard and do like four silos, something like that, and make sure those silos are completely full by the end of, of fall. That way they have plenty to eat during the winter. As you can see, I'm getting ready to craft um, another preserves jar. Eventually I'm going to have a shed full of preserves jars. Uh, but as we're starting out here, we're kind of limited on everything. Our resources, money, especially. We don't have very much gold. Um, so eventually that's what we'll end up with. For now, I'm just going to just line them up right there. And just so that I can um, be processing as much of my vegetables as possible. And right now, spring cauliflower is the vegetable. Um, that we need to be processing because it makes so much more money really than anything else. So, um, and it makes pickled cauliflower is what it makes when you put it in the preserve jar. So um, I'll keep adding to that little row there. Um, uh, you also see the kegs where we're processing some kind of wine. I don't remember what's in there now, but again, processed uh, produce and vegetable, whatever you have, makes more money than the act than just throwing it in the shipping bin. So at this point, I, I have enough money to get us by. Uh, so it's okay to, for me to be able to go ahead and um, uh, pop some in there and wait for it. So I'm okay to wait for it. Because again, just remember that this is a retired slow play. Um, so I'm not, you know, I'm not power gaming. If you're looking for tips on how to power game this game and how to, you know, do the very fastest way of making money. And I've seen videos on, you know, how to be a millionaire 
multi times over by the end of the first year, this is not your video. This is not the one you would want to be watching. Even before I retired, I like to relax when I play games. And so I do have some games that aren't as relaxing to play. Um, on my uh, YouTube channel, I do have a playthrough of Skyrim that I'm currently working on. And that's not a very relaxing game for the most part. I try to play it in a more relaxed way than 99% of the people that play it. Um, I'm trying to slow down, enjoy the journey and, you know, what all those things. But, uh, um, actually, you know, that's, that doesn't make, that game doesn't make me relaxed. I love it. I've played it, um, for over 11 years now. So obviously I love it. But, um, if I'm just trying to chill, if I'm just trying to relax, um, there's a lot of other games that I would prefer to play. As you can see, uh, I just made a cork bobber for this fishing rod. I have found that for me, um, that's the best tackle. It makes that green bar a little bit longer, so I'm able to uh, um, catch my fish a little bit easier. So that's the reason why I put a new um, cork bobber on there. So we're going to go off and do a little bit of fishing. Um, you may have heard me mention um, way too many times that fishing is one of my least favorite things to do. Um, actually, it's my second least favorite thing to do. Fighting in the game is my least favorite thing to do. And I only do as much as I absolutely have to, to do whatever it is, you know, whatever I have to do to be able to uh, work on completion. If you just want to play the game to play it and not worry about completing the game, meaning you've done everything there is to do in the game, then don't fight at all. You never have to. It's not a requirement. But for me, there's, you know, I want to have a c completion here with you guys. Um, I've had one other, I've only had one other save, and I think it's 80% complete. At this point, we don't even know because we haven't got to that part of the game yet. Um, but it is important to me that I complete 100%. So eventually we will. This bulletin board here, as a reminder, this is like an advanced bulletin board. There's another one up there by the uh, the store, and it has quests that are much more easy, easier to complete at this level of the game. The other one is for late game, more advanced stuff, and uh, I think we'll try it. We'll try a few every now and again when there's one or two that's not. Uh, above our level, above our uh, experience. So um, anyway, I stopped by there and saw that. So anyway, um, I'm sorry I got off track. <laughs> Um, what we're going to do here is every once in a while, we really should come down here much more often. We should come down here and look and see what's on the beach. There's all kinds of things down here and they're, they're valuable. Some of them are quite valuable. And sometimes there's artifact spots. So um, anyway, that's what I wanted to come down here and do a little fishing today. Not that I'm excited about the fishing. Do you see those little sparkle, those little bubbles in the water? If you hit those bubbles right on, you'll see a plus sign. And supposedly you'll get a higher quality fish. Uh, you can see my green bar is quite a bit bigger. I have the best fishing rod and I got the cork bob bobber that makes that much bigger. Uh, makes it easier to catch. As I started to say and I interrupted my own self, is that fishing is my second least favorite thing to do in this game. Um, it's harder in the beginning because you've got a tiny little green bar and you got a bad fishing rod and you know it's really hard to catch anything. Um, but as, as, you, as it goes along and as you get better, do you see the plus sign? That means I hit the bubbles there. As you get better, it's, it does get easier. So again, fishing is one of those things that if you don't care about completion, you don't need to worry about it. Um, it is good money. I know that a lot of people on the uh, um, the help boards, the bulletin boards, if you will, they talk about fishing all the time. It's their favorite thing to do. That you can you can make good money fishing in the very beginning. So it's not a bad thing to be. Oh, my bubbles went away. It's not a bad thing. Um, it's just very frustrating for a lot of people. Uh, interestingly, this I'm playing on a PC with a mouse and keyboard. The version, the mobile version, um, I don't know. I just think fight. First off, fighting is a lot easier. It has an auto fight function um, that you can set it to automatically fight, and you just take your hands off your tablet or your phone or whatever you're playing it on, and just watch the fight happen. 
and you fight so much better than you do yourself, or at least I do. I wish we had that option on the PC and I wish we had that option for fishing. Automatically fish. Then I won't have to click that button and get so annoyed and frustrated. <laughs> So anyway, we're working on making some money today. Um, I, you know, the higher, the, the, there's little stars on the fish. If you haven't noticed them before, if it's the first time you've ever watched this or watched a video, there's a no star, gray star, yellow star, and a purple star. And those are in order of quality and value of the fish themselves. And if you just don't care, great, don't pay any attention. But if you want to know more about that, then you can go to the, um, there's a wiki, a wonderful wiki for uh, Stardew Valley. It, I think I put all the links in my descriptions so that you can go to them. Uh, we just picked up an artifact, so that's cool. Um, you can go there and um, uh, find out what those fish value are if you put them in your shipping bin. So you can find out the differences between those quality uh, fish. So, and I look at that. I'm so OCD. I had to put them in the order of the stars of the quality. That's so silly. <laughs> but my OCD overrides my my uh, common sense sometimes. But you can see that bar is pretty wide. Now, again, when you're fishing, the harder the fish is, the more that daggum fish is going to jump up and down, and it makes it so much harder to catch. But it's a higher quality fish. So. Um, and if I'm fishing for just uh, money, then it, it's cool. Um, if I'm fishing to try to catch a specific fish, so because certain fish you can only catch on a certain season, a certain type of day, and a certain location, then it's going to be, those fish are hard to catch, and uh, you're going to have to really struggle sometimes with your bar, which is why I like my green bar bigger. Uh, to try to catch the fish. There's all kinds of, of uh, lures and uh, tackle and things that you can use, but I'm using this combination that I'm using right now is the one that I think works best for me. Um, so I will probably continue using that uh, throughout the rest of my fishing experience uh, in the game. I don't, I, once I get past the things that I have to catch and once my farm is really cranking along, then generally I just don't fish anymore because I don't want to. It's not, it's not something that I'm really wanting to do. <laughs> it's just something I have to do in the game if I want to get to a certain place. And so that's kind of where I'm at with it right now. I'm getting to that certain place that I want to be. So anyway, you can watch me fish here for a while. Um, hopefully my kitties will be quiet. They've been really noisy today. I don't know. I was out of town for a couple of days and they were not happy. No, actually it was like 28 hours and they were so not happy. So you can see uh, my backpack's getting pretty full and I want to keep fishing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw away the things I don't need. I'm going to eat that seaweed because it helps my energy. I don't like to waste it. So I might as well eat it, right? Um, and make room for more fish. And we're going to... Um, fill up my backpack with fish. It is, like I said, it's a good money maker. Uh, if you're not doing something else, I don't have anything else that I'd rather, that I need to be doing. Um, I need to catch more fish, so I'm out here fishing. Look at that, Arid it's called iridium. The purple one is called iridium quality. That's the highest quality of anything. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the more, those higher, the higher the iridium, the higher the quality, the more money. Iridium is the highest, so that was cool. I like to see that when I catch it, Mike might as well, right? So cool. So catching some good fish. We're going to pop them in our shipping bin tonight and, and uh, get some money. After a while, um, I start keeping a few of each one. You see that treasure chest? Whoa, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Ah. I hate it when I go for the treasure chest and then I can't catch the fish because you lose both. And that makes me mad. And we're going to get this one. Um, so anyway, what I do eventually, oh, look at this. Oh my goodness. This is one of the best treasure chests I've had. It had a special ring in it, increased weapon speed by 10%. So cool. And a diamond, diamonds are worth 500 if you shouldn't put them in your shipping bin. It's like, holy moly. I was very excited to see that. That's one of the best um, treasure chests I've got. So I thought that was pretty cool. So back to my point is eventually I will be keeping, um, I usually keep 
around five of each fish that I catch, each type of fish that I catch. And I have said it before and I'll say it many, many more times. Stardew Valley has created hoarders out of all of us. It's like, what if I give, I sell all them and then someone requests a halibut fish as a, as a quest? Well, if I don't have one in my inventory, then I can't give one to anybody. So that I just start keeping something of everything. And look at that. We fished up a secret note. Secret notes. Now this says there is something. It looks like at nighttime by that bush, by that tree on the other side of the bridge. So secret notes are really cool. They, they t t tell you secret places. So I was very happy to see that. We'll have to go check out that location and see what it is. Um, and again, you have to look at the hints. You know, here's the location. It had showed it. it was at night. It looked like there was a moon up there. So there's something there. And usually you have to uh, dig something up with your hoe, which is another reason why I carry it. So it looks like there's supposed to be something here somewhere. Maybe the time's wrong. I don't know. Maybe it has to be midnight. Maybe I've got the wrong tool. Not sure, but I'm looking at the note again. And secret notes, you can come back and look at them again. And again, it looks like it's by the, the bush that's in between the tree and the other bush. And usually it's the hoe. So I don't know if I'm just hitting the wrong spot. I don't know. I'm <laughs> not sure. I'm trying. Oop, shake a bush. I could try to shake the bush. Because it doesn't tell you what you're supposed to do. I don't think it said specifically use something. But I'm at the right place. I, maybe I'm at the wrong time. I don't know. I don't know if it's the wrong season. So some of them are, I mean, they're, they're not rocket science, but I'm not very good at puzzles. <laughs> I've never been very good at puzzles. And if you are the same way and you don't want to get frustrated, and you can go to the wiki and it will tell you in very much detail on how to find whatever it is I'm not finding here. And hey, Willie, how's it going? I, oh, and the, Willie's another person that I don't talk to enough because he's, you know, he's usually behind um, hit the counter at the fishing place. And also, um, I just don't go down there very often. So I just don't see him very often. So I'm not finding whatever it is I'm supposed to find. And I can look at this all day long. <laughs> it's like, which one was it? It was this one. And it was, it kind of shows that it's like 1240 and we can't be out that late. <laughs> So I'm not sure. We don't want to fall asleep. And so I'm just banging, banging, banging. I don't know. 1240 is awful close to one. And I'm one of those people. I know a lot of people that play their game up until the point they pass out and they don't care. I don't like doing that. I didn't like spending as much time as I did. Once it gets in the red, I start, you know, the time up there after midnight, it goes into the red. I start panicking. So, and that's just me. Um, I mean, you can stay out until 2 a.m. The if it's between 1 and 2 a.m., I believe, then you don't wake up with full energy. Uh, and you, if it's 2 o'clock, if it's 2.01 or whatever, you pass out. And I hate that. I hate that, hate that, hate that. So I try to get to bed. I mean, I usually, when it gets dark, I come to bed. I know you've heard me talk about that before. Look at this. Ooh, level 9 farming. We got a seed maker, an iridium sprinkler, and quality fertilizer. Look at all those new things. So our level, our farming level just went up. So that is very, very good. Uh, so I was very happy to see that, that our farming level has gone up. And that takes us to day 13 of spring in year number two. So we are just cranking along here. And we'll take a quick weather report. Uh, clear and sunny tomorrow. And look at all of our things watering themselves. So what I'm doing here is I'm double checking to make sure that I have the highest quality. Um, and you can see I'm starting to collect a few. So I'm trying to keep only the highest quality of each fish that I'm uh, saving. So that's what I'm doing is I'm looking at each one. My mouse one's not moving as much as my eyes were and they were going, okay, I've got this one. I've got this one. I've got this one. So eventually we're going to have to break this out and get a second chest. What I'll end up doing is put all the uh, shells and crustaceans in one box, uh, one chest and uh, all the fish in another. 
and actually eventually we'll end up with two um, I think two fish ones and one crustacean one uh, so isn't that silly uh, I'm keeping the diamonds right now um, eventually we'll not be keeping all of them they're worth 500 each but that's okay um, for now we'll go ahead and, and hang on to them for now yeah, let's see. It's 610 and what I'm doing is popping the fish that we don't need into the shipping bin. I didn't do it when I got home because I could have, but I was just paranoid that I was going to um, crash and burn. <laughs> I can't stand to fall asleep um, and not go to bed at a certain time. It's like, no, no, no. So I'm just kind of tucking all the things away uh, that I don't need to keep on me. Uh, that ring was very cool. Um, I don't think we have too much jewelry at this point so I don't need my fishing rod um, for right now so we'll see how much we get for all that fish in the morning when we sleep so for now we're gonna go do our chores and then look ooh, look at all of our jams or jellies or whatever it is we got there it's like ooh, I'm excited what are we gonna get so those are the preserve jars those four um, so it made sense to put four more cauliflower in there and again, we'll see how much we're getting for them. And we're, I'm using the lower quality cauliflowers. So um, we'll see how much we get for those uh, in the morning when we wake up and see what they all say. Pop four in there. So that's cool. Um, this is an artifact. We've already turned one in um, to the museum for Gunther. I try to keep artifacts too. I try to keep at least um, five, <laughs> sometimes more, all of them. I don't know. I keep a lot. Of the artifacts because you never know we might need it for something i don't know so i hate to get rid of something because once it, once you get rid of it it's gone so again i'm doing my morning chores and petting all my pets and gonna milk clara if she holds still thank you clara oh a iridium quality large milk that's great that's the best you can get and a goat you can only milk every other day so today's not the day and i never remember from day to day. It's like, was it yesterday or not? Uh, if you're a first time watcher, I have a little bit of short term memory loss, uh, kind of normal for my age, but it really bugs me. So if you hear me repeat something, sometimes it's because I want you to hear something again. And sometimes it's because I don't remember telling you. So <laughs> you just got to deal with it. Those little green things, by the way, are dinosaurs. Aren't they cute? Dinosaurs give you dinosaur eggs and dinosaur eggs makes mayonnaise of very good quality and price it's a really high quality item so eventually look at this we got another dinosaur egg yay i'm so excited this barn is upgraded as far as it can go it can hold 12 animals in it and um yeah we're gonna have a lot we're gonna have a lot i'm sorry this is not the barn this is the the chicken coop it's the highest upgraded chicken coop so in the chicken coop um, we're going to have a whole bunch of dinosaurs. Yay. And so, again, I don't think they're that cute. I don't think that, you know, if I'm looking at them, the chickens are cuter. Um, but um, the dinosaur mayonnaise is so worth it. And if we're talking money, um, and we need money. We're at 19000 We need a heck of a lot more. So I'm going to pop all that in there. I just got the notification that the egg festival has started. Haven't decided if we're going to go to that egg festival and try to beat Abigail. Not sure what we want to do. So we're checking our uh, crops here and seeing what we got. We have nothing that we need to harvest today. So let's go try our luck. Maybe today will be the day that we beat Abigail. In the meantime, we'll check the shop. Springtime at this festival is when you can buy strawberry seeds. Strawberries are another good um, crop to have. Once you plant the strawberries and they mature, they continue giving you strawberries um, the rest of the season. So um, you can get them the first year. And so I picked up a few more so we can have a few more. We're trying not to spend too much. Uh, right now because we have so many expensive things to purchase uh, but we can run around and say hello to everyone and uh, get our hello for the uh, one of the hellos in there for the day um, and so you know they just kind of watch and see what they say to you how they respond and you know mostly there's 
Kent. Kent was the, uh, he wasn't in the first year. He comes later. He's the father um, of what, two of the little kids, and he uh, was a war veteran, and so uh, he comes in the second year, which is interesting that they bring him in later. He's, um, he doesn't, he's not doing very well when he comes in. He's got some, uh, I think it's PTSD. So it's very interesting if you really read what they're saying. Obviously, I'm just rushing through all these. But in these conversations, as you play and, and talk to these people, um, you find you learn out a lot about their back history. And um, it's, very, it's very interesting, I think, anyway. Um, but I'm not doing that right now because I'm kind of, you know, I've seen all this before and you guys can see it when you play it. I really encourage you to buy and support this, uh, developer of this game. It is developed by a single person that did it all. The art, the music, the stories, everything. And I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm amazed that one person did this. And it's one of, one is when it came out and for a while after it was one of the highest rated and downloaded games on Steam. And look at the, look at the reviews and the ratings on it. I think you'll, you'll be amazed, especially when you realize only one person did this. Um, so anyway, that's my little plug, my unsolicited plug. I don't get paid to say that. It's just the truth. Uh, yes, I have hands on my farm. Evelyn is so sweet. She's such a sweet granny. What is she talking about hens? Marty's talking about the hens too. Isn't that funny? Why are we having... Oh, we're talking about eggs today. Uh, yes. Let's do the egg hunt and see how bad I do this year. Ugh. We're gonna try. It's, it's really not that... If you're not... If you don't have a map in front of you, then it is just almost impossible to find the most eggs. I think it's, you have to find nine to win. I'm not a kiddo. I'm not a kiddo. I'm a farmer, but I want the prize. There's other adults. There's Marnie. Uh, who else is there? Sam. So there's a, there's a number of adults there, or almost adults. I guess Marnie's like a teenager. Sam's like a teenager. Oh, look at little kids. They're running around and like, ugh. You see that? I got one so far. Not a good start. And there, you can see, you can barely see them. So two, look at this. It's like, oh my gosh, there's supposed to be one. Oh, I'm doing terrible. I'm doing terrible. I have 35 more seconds. I only have two eggs. And I actually was looking at a map, but I didn't plan it out very good ahead of time. Look at this. This is just terrible. There's one there I can't get to. Look at that. That was a total colossal waste of my time. So I have four eggs. And there's 18 seconds left. I have a feeling Abigail is going to kick my butt yet again. Oh my gosh. It's terrible. I wasted so much time going back and forth, back and forth. Six seconds. I'm going to end up with five eggs. Am I going to get this one before the time's out? No, the tree's in the way. Ugh. That's terrible. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Oh my gosh. That's terrible. I mean, the little kids beat me. How embarrassing. Yeah, look at all the eggs. Yeah, I'll just stop it. Tell us who won. Tell us who won. Come on. Abigail. Ugh, her nemesis. Abigail has won again. I think Abigail wins every time if you don't win. We'll win eventually. I'll get it. I have won this before in a, in a previous play, so we'll get it. So these festivals and things, I did go to all of them um, in the first year to show you them all. And um, most of the time you end up at 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. on your front step. And um, I was looking to see if I had a place to put some strawberries. And looks like I do not currently have a place to put strawberries without putting down a new sprinkler. I can make iridium sprinklers now. Remember that we had that when we woke up in the morning. Our uh, level nine uh, farming, we can make a we can make an iridium sprinkler. And iridium sprinklers, the reg the ones we currently have, the one the one I just picked out of here, you can have four plants sitting around it, right? The other ones, the brown ones that you see, you can have uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have eight. You can have eight. Iridium sprinklers, you can have 24. So they are highly desirable. 
Um, I'm going to put some, some fertilizer, if I have any. Uh, I like the, um, I think it's, I like the one, the fat, the fast grow one. It, not having that, I mean, it doesn't mean, to me the quality doesn't matter as much at this point. But I can make some. So anyway, I'm trying to do it really quick because it's already 10.50. It's later than I use. Ah, I need oak resin. Where's my oak resin? I have one. So eventually, my goal is I will have tons and tons of um, deluxe speed grow. And that's what I put on all my plants so they grow faster. Uh, I'm not as... I'm, you can only have... You only have one option. You can either have... Um, higher quality or faster growing. You can't do both. So I'd rather have faster growing. So anyways, I put down uh, four strawberry plants so that we have strawberries growing. So that's cool. And I got a sprinkler. I'm really lazy. I don't, once I get sprinklers and I can make sprinklers, I don't water plants anymore ever. I don't put them anywhere they have to be watered by me, except for the indoor uh, pot, like that little pot right there. I'll do an indoor plant, but that's it. So let's see here. We got 2,000 with our uh, jellies and mayonnaise and cheese and the foraging and the fish. We got 1,200 with the fish that we caught so the day before, which we, we didn't put in there. And then other is wool, and that's from our bunny. So we got 500 for one gold star wool. That's awesome. So not a bad... Um, little take overnight that's awesome that puts us over 22 almost 23,000 and that is so necessary we need that I don't know why I check rain every day it doesn't matter uh definitely want to check queen of sauce because that's where you get rest some of your recipes most of them and I hadn't been paying attention checking Harvey here and Harvey likes pickled items and coffee um, that's what he loves. I'm sorry. He likes these other things um, that you can see there, things I've already given him. And that's how you know. If you've given him something and they either love, like, um, neutral or hate it, that's how you find out, which is not a fun way to find out that someone hates something. I hate it when I do that. How many? I think I keep doing that to Abigail. That's why she's my nemesis, because I keep giving her the wrong thing, and I don't, you know, you can check. You can go to the wiki if you want to make sure you don't make any stupid mistakes like I did, um, but I keep doing that. I don't know why. So I'm putting regular quality in. And again, higher quality give us higher pricing and put the rest of them away. So yes, cauliflower. Yes, yes, yes. Now I've got some pick, pickled cauliflower. And if I don't forget, I can take it to Harvey. It's a loved gift for Harvey. And giving someone a loved gift raises your hearts more so um, than uh, a light gift. Uh, neutral doesn't do anything and hate hurts your relationship. So we don't want to do that at all, especially with Harvey, because we're, he's our boyfriend. We want him to be more than that. So run around and just kind of giving some loving to the pets and the animals. And in the, what I'm doing is holding my right mouse button down and just moving it around. That's how you can pet your animals quickly. Um, and, and so that's what I was trying to do, especially the ones that are hidden in the grass. Um, so uh, that's what I was doing is making sure everybody got petted. You can see that I have two different places of where their fresh grass is and there's, it's divided. So I grow it in one side and let them eat the other. And when they've eaten enough of the other side, then I, I move them around. So I rotate them out through the fields, similar to what you would do if you have real life grass fed animals, you would rotate them through their fields. Um, so they're not eating too much. And, uh, so um, that's what I was doing. That's what I do. And I've always done that from the beginning. It made sense to me. And um, you don't have to feed them grass. You could just have them not go outside at all and just put hay in the silo. But I think I read somewhere that it makes them happier to be outside. Plus, it's free. It's free. Grass is free. Unless you're making, well, it's still free. I mean, I, I make, eventually will make my own grass seed, but it's still free. Uh, because I make it with uh, fiber, and so, you know, I like I like the idea of my animals being outside, 
and I was also counting here how many cauliflower spots do I have and how much time do I have left uh, to be able to uh, plant more of it. I was just checking and see and what I got here at this present time I only have seeds in one container uh, eventually they get all broken down by because I get so many uh, they get broken down by um, the seasons so the really three seasons that you can plant outside and then I have a, a winter one for other stuff like forageables so you'll see that as we progress and as we're able to add buildings and you know get all these chests I don't like having all these chests laying around the house eventually uh, we'll, we'll have them all uh, located what the heck am I doing we'll have them all located in uh, in sheds uh, but we can't afford them right now and that's okay um, I was double checking to make sure they had my hoe with me I was also double checking my quests and I really don't have uh, any quests going on the present moment and I want to keep my furnaces going and my charcoal kiln which takes wood and turn it into coal and then I'm putting my iron bars and collecting them so I like to keep that going uh, I don't like to make them sit too long because there is nothing worse than when you're trying to make something and you don't have enough iron bars or whatever kind of bars that metal bars that you need for something and it's only because you just didn't put them in the furnaces so I'd, I'd like to keep the furnaces cranking along as much as possible and I pop up here and kind of collect some forageables and again so that you know these trees can be chopped down they regrow um, I like to collect these dandelions some people like them um, and they're good gifts to give away for most people there's there's every once in a while there's somebody who doesn't like one and I don't know who they are <laughs> looking at my relationships here I really have not worked on them as well as I should um, he's taking the day off Jody cool Sam oh Kent I call him Sam it's Kent and uh, I think his son is Sam I'm not sure but let's go see Harvey Let's go see what we could do with Harvey's in our relationship. How are we doing, Harvey? And we're looking pretty good. What if we give him a loved gift? We have one heart to go. And he says, it's my favorite stuff. It's like you read my mind. And, oh, we're not quite there. So we're going to have to give him some more gifts and again talking to people and giving them gifts um, increases your relationships Sebastian wants an anchovy I think I have an anchovy in my um, fishing chest I'm pretty sure um, so anyway as I was saying about the gifts that's how you increase the relationships you do two things you talk to them and give them gifts if you can give them a loved gift on their birthday that absolutely it increases very quickly of course you're only going to have you know one shot out of the whole year but still it if you're close that will make a nice change this is the quarry and um, I'm coming here to uh, break up some rocks and maybe chop these trees down the, the again the quarry is a place where you can not only get these resources but you can get some special items here too um, if I'm not mistaken I think this is where I got my first dinosaur egg ever was in here um, so there's lots of things you can find in here and so I come here when I'm you know needing resources and um, and clear this hole out because if you don't clear it out then it doesn't have a chance to reset and other things can't pop in here so you know we're gonna use this stuff we're gonna use the stone we're gonna use the look at that I got uh, seven pieces of copper from here um, I think that's is that uh, regular iron ore what is that yeah iron ore so again this is a, a good place for resources and I really like to keep it cleaned out if I can so that more stuff gets a chance to pop look at that gold ore I mean that's you know that's pretty cool that's a good thing to, a good thing to find and I can see there's more iron ore up there and so we, we're gonna need all that so we're gonna pop all these rocks and get this get the goods Five, oh my gosh five or out of one one uh, vein there that was awesome so you never know so so right right now I've got seven iron ore 
and nine copper from coming up here. So how long would it have taken us to get that in the mine where we have to fight creatures off? So how easy is that? The answer is very easy. <laughs> so I'm looking at the, again at the relationships. I'm just not doing as good as I should on those. Um, but I'll get there. We'll get there. Eventually they'll all be our good friends. It just takes time. You know, both the longevity of the game, but it takes time out of your time while you're trying to do all these other things. There's so much to do in Stardew Valley. But again, am I in a rush? No, is the answer to the question. I am not in a rush. Um, I am enjoying sharing this game with you because um, it is just such a relaxing, fun, well done game. And I'm glad that I'm sharing this with you. Uh, when I was trying to decide what games to um, start my channel off with, this one popped into my head. It's like, that's a no brainer. That's definitely one I wanna share for a number of reasons. It's a fun game to play and I really want to uh, help spread the word about this game so that you can see it. And if you wanna play it, then you can tell by looking whether or not you'd wanna play this game. I have made a lots of uh, game purchase decisions by watching YouTube um, on a game to say, do I like that? You know, is there something about that that, um, that I want to play? So I recently found a brand new game that actually recently got released and it's just a wonderful game. I may end up putting it on my YouTube channel as a, as a game playthrough because it's so much fun. And, um, you know, again, I want to, people to hear about games and things. So what I was doing here is I was trying to decide if I wanted to switch out my rings and I had already looked at them to see what they had. And I decided to go ahead and sell that one. Um, that was the Adventurer's Guild. And uh, if you haven't watched previous episodes, then you can only reach that after a certain level, after you do certain things. Once you go there, you can go after 2 p.m. I'm not 100% sure what time it closes, uh, but you can sell your um, weapon and your shoes and things that you don't need or don't want anymore. Um, and buy things too. I bought a sword there one time after I made a grievous error. Previous episode, you gotta watch it to find out. Again, I'm picking up some forageables and these are daffodils and they make pretty good gifts too. And again, uh, talking with people increases the relationship. So when I pass someone, I talk to them. Eventually, what I'll do is I'll try to start going down my list and say, okay, where are my relationships at? Who do I want to focus on? And I really try to make sure I hit that hit up that person um, every day to talk to them. I give them as many gifts as I can um, to try to get those relationships up. So we'll start selecting people and go down our list and get going on them because you do hit uh, you do get special rewards based on those relationships um, and where they are so eventually they'll all be our best friends anybody that is a uh, a marriageable person they have more hearts available to you so for instance um, um, the uh, like Harvey for instance he has 10 hearts available to me um, anybody that is not a marriageable person, you can get eight hearts to be friends with them and you can be friends with them. You just can't marry them. So there's only certain people that you can marry. And when you look at your friend list there, well, you can see that it'll tell you, uh, if they're single or not, meaning you can marry them or not. So we're popping in to see the mayor. We're going to give him a daffodil. Oh, and he says, that's nice. Thank you. So you can see the ones that say single, those are the people that you can marry. And I was wrong about that. Non-marriageable people, it's 10 hearts that you can get up to. If they're single, you can only get up to eight unless you're going to um, try to get them to be a, a, a spouse for you. So anyway, we're gonna stop and say hi to people along the way and be friendly and neighborly and hopefully not give anybody a wrong gift, <laughs> hurt the relationship. I really struggled with that with a few people. Abigail is one of the main ones that I think she hates me. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so anyway, headed for home. Um, there is just, look at this. I'm double checking. Uh, Harvey, you know, pickles and coffee, pickles and coffee. And after you marry your spouse, they, they're the only one that I know of that loses 
friendship points if you don't interact with them. So um, I always made sure that I had a coffee machine and co I make coffee uh, to give regularly to my husband once he becomes my husband because I want to make sure that he doesn't stop being my friend or we lose points. Um, so I thought that we would continue just a little bit of cleanup here. Um, these trees and things that we're not using and again this is like I call this my beginner farm because it's it's not how I'm going to want it it's not the layout is not the way that I want it it's kind of uh, you, when you first start you don't have much choice in the matter uh, you don't have a whole lot of energy and you can only cut down so many trees in a day and uh, they're so just into for convenience purposes. It's like, okay, where do I have a pine tree for instance? So I ran down and that's where I had the first pine tree and I stuck a tap on it. So eventually I'm going to create a, a location of where my um, my trees that are tapped are located and um, I use a certain kind more than other. I use a lot of oak. Like you just saw me gather that pine tar. It's way down there out of, you know, out of my way. But you, since we've, you've seen that we've been able to, when we cut down trees and things, we get seeds. So um, I'll be able to put them exactly where I want them. The only exception to that is the mushroom trees. They kind of sprout seeds next to the previous mushroom tree. But I've heard in late game, there may be a way to get mushroom tree seeds, but I don't know. And I don't know if we'll be able to see that at any given point. Um, but for now, at this point in our game, we can't uh, put a mushroom tree anywhere we want it. That's why I was very excited when we started seeing the mushroom trees and thought, okay, where am I gonna uh, propagate them so they can you know, grow in a direction I want them to grow in. Uh, the other trees, you could chop them all down and replant them wherever you want. Now it does take a while to grow the trees. Um, as you can see, I'm moving this one. It's like, okay, I'm ready for this to be out of the way. Um, and that, then uh, you can see we even got ourselves acorn seed. So um, it's like, okay, where do I want to put this? Um, so we're going to, we'll put them where, where it makes sense uh, when I kind of redesign everything. So uh, I kind of end up doing like, um, multiple designs. Like in the very beginning, everything's right here in front of the house. Um, every, you know, all the chests are right there. And so, and the trees that I want to, that I need to tap are right there too. Um, I put my barn and my coop right there. So I kind of, you know, that's kind of a beginning, uh, layout. Then if you haven't watched any of my previous episodes, I described that I do have a review of Stardew Valley, um, on my channel. And in that review, I show, um, of course, how to start a game, but I also show what a 10 year farm looks like. And that layout of that farm is pretty similar to what I will be doing with this farm as far as the layout and where I end up going with it. And um, so that gives you an idea of, of how it will look eventually. I, there are some things that I wanted to change about it. And so I will you know, hopefully be making those changes as we go along and not make mistakes in my design. Um, but sometimes, you know, it's just kind of like looking at the after fact, uh, after the fact and, and making some changes. And I also wanted to comment that I, I can't take any of the credit of the, the design of my farm because the, uh, there is a wonderful, um, forum that I have in my comments where you can go and you can see pictures of other people's farms. And what I ended up doing is kind of taking pieces of the ones that I liked certain things of and designed my farm once I could move things around um, after it. Now, since I have done that 10 year farm, there has been updates to the game. This version that I'm playing now is 1.5. And I think there's been an update where you can move that greenhouse because prior to that, the greenhouse had to stay exactly where it is forever, but I believe it can be moved. Now, I don't know that I will because I kind of like where it's at. It's kind of convenient to the other places, uh, the other buildings that I have. And so, um, I don't know. We'll see. I wanted to double check this and kind of show you duck mayonnaise 450. Look at that. 
That's so good. <laughs> and so anyway, they'll just kind of give you an idea of the prices. That melon wine, 750 gold for metal, uh, melon wine. So for a single bottle. So anyway, I got off track. Um, so I don't know if I, I don't think I'm going to change where that uh, greenhouse is. I, you probably have, may or may not have noticed, I have not done anything with that greenhouse yet. I've got things planned in my mind, but I'm not ready. Um, there are certain things that I grow in my greenhouse and I grow them forever in my greenhouse and we're not there yet. We don't have the things that I need and uh, we'll get there. But that's one reason why I haven't touched it is because I, I don't have all the things that I need. Oh, look at Marnie gave us some hay. I mentioned that earlier. Um, what's this? Uh, okay, Granny wants us to bring some leeks. We could do that. And uh, Sebastian wanted an anchovy, which we forgot about. So it's a good idea to check your quest list on a regular basis to make sure you don't miss something. I mean, for a very easy thing to do, grab an anchovy, assuming I have one. Yeah, I've got one right there. We get quite a bit of gold and um, plus friendship points for that. So that's all a really good thing to check that quest uh, log on a regular basis. So I'm saying, where are my leaks? Where are my leaks? I've got to get better organized uh, with my goodies here. We need more uh, chests for sure. And we'll, we'll create some. We'll do like a, a spring, summer, fall, and winter chest, both for the, uh, the fruits that, and vegetables that we have. I like to organize them that way. And eventually um, we'll do, uh, when we start creating our own seeds, it makes it a lot easier uh, to find the fruits and vegetables that we want to create seeds of. I'm kind of putting things in order of uh, what I'm going to do. Like I need to take a leek to town. I need to take uh, the anchovy to town. If I think of it, I'm going to grab the pickle and take it to Harvey. And uh, so I'm kind of getting those things in order. Also going to run over here. And when it's raining, our pets stay inside and farm animals stay inside. So we'll go in and check on them real quick. And we're going to say, hey, how you doing there, Clara? And get our milk. And I don't remember if we milked Nanny yesterday. It'll tell us, nope, we must have milked her yesterday. And you can only do every other day. Um, so it's like, okay, grab my cheeses. And we're gonna go check on all of our animals. Look at all these animals in the coop. We got ducks, we got a chicken and a rabbit, and dinosaurs. And all of those are really important. Now, eventually, I narrow it down to a bunny, uh, one chicken, and the rest dinosaurs. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sell my ducks eventually. So for now, I wanna keep them. Um, we need more dinosaurs. <laughs> So again, I'm, I put all my ducks, all of my eggs in the chest there. And then I say, what do I have the most of? And that's what I grab and, and uh, pop in the mayonnaise maker. And I like these rainy days. Ah, I love the sound of the rain. And oh, look at all these cauliflowers that are ready. Oh, how wonderful. And it's the 15th of the month. So I'll have to check and see. I don't know if we have enough time in the month to plant more. Uh, oh, got some parsnips. Look at that. And uh, we'll find out. Again, cauliflower is the, um, for for price-wise, it's the, the best crop to have, especially if you pickle it. If you pickle the cauliflower, it's it makes the most of any of the other things. And I'm sorry if I'm spoiling that for y'all. Oh, look at all this. Garlic, garlic, garlic. Now, having said that, I do plant other things. I like to have variety. Uh, I want to make sure that I grow a um, sufficient amount of all of the fruits and vegetables available to grow. So I will do that. As far as my overall plan, um, what I end up planting mostly in the spring is the cauliflower uh, because it just, it just makes so much. And this is our first garlic. Look at that. That's cool. It's first time for everything. So I want to make sure that I uh, have a little bit of everything. And, um, and again, right now we're purchasing seeds, uh, but oh, I missed that cauliflower. I saw that on rewatching it, I saw it, but when I did it, I missed it. Uh, so you can see we've got quite a few places to plant here. Um, what I'm doing is putting the things away that I don't need to carry with me. 
and I gotta get myself organized here. Let's see, we're gonna toss in the mayonnaise and our tulip honey. Honey is, um, I got that planted right there by the silo for now. Eventually I'll do a lot more, but your honey, the flowers make it more valuable and each season there's different flowers that you could plant. So I try to find out which ones are gonna be the most valuable uh, flower to make the most the most expensive honey that I can have and uh, I plus I love tulips uh, I may have said in earlier uh, episodes that tulips are a, a childhood thing my grandmother um, had a tulip garden that I don't even know how big across it was it was a minimum of 10 feet it may have been 12 15 feet across it was huge and she grew every color of tulip that you could have and I loved going to her house in the springtime and seeing tulips. And for those of you who um, know or don't know about spring tulips, they don't last very long. They're like, they just don't last very long. They, they pop up and within a week or so they're gone and that's it. So, you know, you've got, you know, 52 weeks out of the year you don't have any tulips <laughs> than you do and they're so beautiful and I always loved them so I really enjoy growing them in this game just because I can uh, I usually grow one in the house and uh, let's see where are we gonna be with Harvey today let's see how we're doing uh, oh hell no you're so sweet yeah you'll see me around check it out all right we have one heart left to be the highest level and what and we got a new achievement and the reason is Harvey, look at all that. Harvey has 10 hearts. And we got an achievement because I think that's our first person with maximum hearts, it tells us here. Uh, where is it? Where is it at? I missed it. Best friends. Reach a 10 heart level with somebody. And we did. So now Harvey is our best friend. He is our boyfriend. So we can ask him to marry us at this point because it's the highest level that you can have with a uh, potential spouse. So I decided to pop in here, say hi to Alex, and then I need to talk to Granny real quick. Uh-oh, the house is leaking, no. And we gave Evelyn, we had to double check because I wanted to make sure that I was giving it to the right person. So we did, oh look at that, 500 gold for remembering to grab a leak and bring it to Granny. 500 gold, as much as we need money. I mean, we're almost at 26,000 now. So that is awesome. Um, you had seen that I tried to check in with Sebastian. He was down in his room and because we're not as good of friends as Sebastian as we could be, um, we can't get into his room. Later on, when you're, best for, when you're better friends with people, you can go into their back rooms or whatever rooms that they have. Now check this dude out. Remember this dude? He said, come back when you are ready to buy a mermaid pendant. So now we have this thing called a mermaid pendant. Give this to the person you want to marry. So that is a pendant that we can give to a person that we want to marry. You have to have the 10 hearts with that person first before you give it to them. And I don't think you can buy that pendant unless you are there with that at least that one person. And so we are so close to having that uh, the, having that um, that particular thing that I want to have to have in this game. I like having that in this game. I think it adds something to it. It's fun. Uh, plus you get extra, they call them cut scenes, but these individual little scenes that are really fun. Um, so we'll get to see that and what happens with Harvey when I give him, oh, look at all those salmon berries. I'm going to give Harvey, Harvey that uh, special pendant. You can only buy that pendant from that weird guy on that little island on a rainy day. So I thought today was the day, and it was. So that's pretty awesome. Let's go back and find Harvey. Where's Harvey? <laughs> I can go in his back room now. There he is. Hey, Harvey, how's it going? He's busy. Oh, really? You're too busy to talk to me? How about this? <laughs> He's not too busy anymore. He said yes. He accepted our proposal. So our ceremony will be in three days. So remember that, the 18th. 
the 18th of spring. So now we're engaged. How awesome is that? And how fun is that? Again, it's just an, it's an additional uh, interesting thing that you can do in the game. You don't have to do that. A lot of people don't want to bother with it. Uh, but I think it's fun. To me, it's kind of part of the role-playing part. You know, I'm becoming part of this community, uh, becoming a farmer in the community, making friends in the community, and then I got a boyfriend in the community, and now I'm going to have a spouse in the community, and you can also have children eventually if you want. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, again, I'm still checking for Sebastian, and I don't know where he's at. Again, they all have schedules and things that they follow. Sometimes the rainy, the rainy day is um, ha, it's an anomaly. It's something they do different on rainy days that they don't do other days. So I don't know where he's at. Um, he could, I can't remember. And if, you, if you're worried about, if you're interested about that and you want to know and you don't want to be searching around like I am now, you can go to the wiki and search for a certain name, a certain character or a certain town uh, person's name. And it will tell you where they are on what days. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. If you get frustrated and you can't find someone you're looking for, um, I did have a, three geodes that I wanted to process today. So check that out. See if there's anything new that we can take to the museum. Again, that's something else that we want to do is eventually we want to fill up that museum with every item that we can um, donate. And it looks like we've already done an obsidian uh, so we don't get to, to turn that in, but I uh, uh, wanted to check and see anyway. And so there's lots of goals that you can have for yourself. I said this many times that, um, you know, you can, you can decide if you want to do a completion uh, thing with your game, meaning you have done every, every quest and all of the, the various items that you, you know, various things you need to do, build all these buildings and have these animals and there's all kinds of things. Um, you can do all of those things or you can do none of it. You don't have to. You can just be a farmer and grow your farm. So again, it's up to you how you want to play your game. And um, so if, for me, I like having specific goals to work on. So I do like to play um, so that I'm completing the game, meaning I've done everything that the game considers uh, a list of items. Eventually we'll be able to see how we find out how much of the game we've completed and um, you know it gives us a list of things to kind of look at and uh, when I uh, in my other game that I have my other save that's a lot further along I uh, I go to the special secret place where I can look at um, the the whatever it is the the screen that tells me completion and what I'm what I don't have and then I go to OneNote and I make a list of all the things that I want to that I need to do to complete you know certain fish that I haven't found for instance special they're called legendary fish so I find you know what I need this fish I need that fish where can it be found and when um, so I, that's what I end up doing. Um, so that's me, that's how I play. And that's how I'm gonna play this playthrough. So you can see that that's how I play. But you've also seen, if you've watched the previous 29 episodes, that I am in no rush to do that. Um, I'm enjoying this journey. I'm enjoying sharing this game with you. So I don't need to hurry up and finish it. It's not, and I mean, I've seen, I think I may have mentioned this, I've seen videos where you know people say, you know, be a millionaire at the end of your first year. I don't care about that. Uh, I could have more money for sure if I worked at it a little bit harder, just a tiny bit harder. Uh, gun it, Sebastian, where is he? <laughs> I want to give him this daggone anchovy. Is he still down there? No, he's not there. So he's somewhere else. So where could he be? Hmm, look at that. I just needed to check the kitchen. There he is. Yes, I do. I want to give you something. I want to make you better friends with you. Um, I think it was only 90 gold or something. Yeah, 90 gold, but that's okay. Uh, it helped our relationship with Sebastian. So I always have trouble with him uh, being friends with him because I don't go near wherever he's at all the time. So um, anyway, that's... Uh, I'm just trying to give you an explanation of where I'm going with this game. So I'm enjoying sharing this game with you. And I've said earlier in this video how and why I share this game that I'm doing that. Um, I also wanted to mention about saving this game. 
um, your game saves overnight. So you kind of have to play through the day to save overnight. If you quit the game before you finish that day, it when you start the game, it starts that day over again. That may seem like a pain in the neck, but at the same time, it's also very helpful. So if you've made some kind of horrendous mistake that day, um, you can start that day over. And I've done that when I've uh, um, died. Like one time, I think, through this playthrough, I died in a cave or yeah, in the mine, I think. And I didn't want to... Um, I didn't want to continue playing from that day. I didn't, oh, I lost something, extreme, two extremely valuable things. And I didn't have the money to be able to get them back from the Adventurer's Guild and I didn't want to lose them permanently. So I closed out my game and restarted that day. Now, I didn't show you that on this video, but I'm explaining it. That's the mechanics for saving your game. That's kind of how it works. So I try to make sure that if I'm playing and if I've got something else I need to do in real life that day, I, like I need to go you know, cook dinner or something, I say, like, okay, I don't want to start my next day because that's going to take however many minutes it takes to play a day. I have never really paid attention. Um, I guess it depends on how many times you pause or whatever. Um, so I just make sure that I have time to play through that entire day because I don't want to redo it. Um, so anyway, that's kind of a little explanation of how the save uh, mechanic works for Stardew Valley. And um, I don't know, I thought I saw somewhere that there's another way, but I don't know. That's how I know, that's how it seems to work for me, and it works for, to my advantage sometimes. Uh, if I make a big boo-boo and I want to fix the boo-boo, is if I catch it in time. <laughs> So I assume, I assume you could do backups of your files and things like that, um, but I don't. I have, uh, you may have seen when I start this game, I've got maybe three or four saves. Some of them were test starts, uh, like when I did a, a review of the game, I did a, a test start. I didn't intend to continue playing that start, but it's still showing on my list of games. I really should delete it. And then I've got my 10, I think it's 11 year now. Uh, save, which is my other one that I've got further along, and then I've got this one that I'm really more interested in playing um, because I get to show you some really cool things along the way. So I know that I lost my tackle, and that's okay. I just continue. I'm continue to fish for a little while. Again, fishing is a um, a really good way to make extra money, and it doesn't require beating up something in the mine. And I kind of want to make up that money. I mean, I just spent five thousand to get engaged. So it would be good to make that money back. We've got so many things that we need to purchase that are pretty expensive, like uh, the sheds. I need, I want at least two. I usually end up with three sheds, and those are expensive buildings. I want. I need to build more silos. Um, Eventually, we're going to get some very special items to help us travel around faster. All of those things are very expensive, so you need money. And I know at some point, like in my 11-year save, money is not a problem. I have tons. I don't even remember how much I've got in that save. And it doesn't matter, because I've purchased all of the expensive things in the game. Um, boy, I almost lost that fish. What the heck? As I've said to you before, I mean, you, I can tell that my green bar is smaller because my cork bobber is gone. And now I don't have any bait either. So I have no bait and no tackle on my fishing rod. And oh my gosh, I don't know if I'll be able to catch anything. Yeah, it's getting kind of late. I don't like staying out too much past dark. There's certain fish that you can only catch at night. Um, and I don't know what I'm looking for here, I don't remember. But I figured, what the heck, we need money, and it's a quick, easy way to get some. And um, I complain, oh, look at that, an eel. You can only catch an eel at certain times, certain places, and I think that's something that we needed. So that's pretty cool. And uh, again, it's raining. It's nighttime. I don't really like get, wandering around at night. I'm just not, that's not my thing at all. Uh, I've seen so many uh, players that um, they'll play right up until they pass out, which is at 2 a.m. And if you do that, it costs you money for them to put you back in your house or whatever. I don't like doing that. So here I come back at the community center, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, uh, no, not that one. 
Is it specialty fish? No, not that one. One of these wants an eel. Night fishing bundle. Check it out. We are going to finish a bundle. Yay! That's exciting. I always love this because I never know what I'm going to get because it's been too long. <laughs> what do we get? A small glow ring. Check that out. That's a little ring that gives a little bit of light. It keeps it around you. And I was looking here and saying, what else do I need? Puffer fish, a sand fish. So again, oh, there's the little Jim, um, Jimino is running around putting another thing up there. We're not going to watch it this time. So cool. That's very cool. I love getting those surprise rewards. It's, I mean, it, it seems small, but it's exciting to me. Plus, um, it's getting closer to finishing that community center, which is a huge undertaking. And it's a big part of the game if you're wanting to do a lot of the completion stuff. So um, anyway, that's all we're going to do on this particular day. Let me toss these fish in our uh, little bin here. So we're going to make sure we've got some that we're keeping. And oh my goodness, look at all of those pickles. Yes, yes, yes. I think we had four. Yeah, we've got some pickles ready. What do we got? Yes, it's cauliflower, so that's awesome. And it's regular quality cauliflower. And let's check, uh, put our fishing rod away and make sure that we have the highest quality of the fish um, in our bat, in our uh, chest here. We're gonna have to get that another chest soon. Uh, we have just got too many fish for one. It's like, oh my goodness, we don't even have a halibut. Yeah, we do, we have a halibut. We've got a gold star. So anyway, I'm checking the quality um, to make sure that I have the highest quality possible of the ones I currently have in my pack. And what we don't need can go in the shipping bin. It's like, oh gosh, this is not, this is a problem. <laughs> Organization is a big part of this. Okay, let's see. Put the pickles. I do not know why I shipped that cauliflower. Fish, fish, and an oyster. It's 11.50. It's getting a little bit late. It's like, oh, okay, I want to get rid of that fiber. And I think that's time for bed. And that's going to be the end of our episode this time. I want to thank you so much for following along on this journey with me. This is so much fun. I appreciate your comments that you make below. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel. It makes YouTube like me better. Plus, it lets me know that I am... I wanted to show you this real quick. 400 for the cauliflower, but 175 um, if you don't pickle it. So I wanted to point that out. Thank you. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day, which is the most important thing.